So I'm artist Eva Lee, and I have with me here my partner, who is uh, an industrial designer, Aaron Trokola. And over there, away on the, to my left, is uh, Nels Christensen, who will be running the, uh, the performance while we're sitting here with that awesome headset on. Dual Brains is a real-time visual performance uh, that will show the brain data of the two of us. We're wearing a custom-designed 3D-printed brainwave headset, which will be connected through OpenBCI. So Aaron designed it. He actually 3D scanned our heads, um, so they literally conform to us specifically. Um, we will be focused on emotionally charged uh, memories, and we'll be doing that before and after holding hands. Why? Well, it turns out that um, holding hands, as is shown in um, neuroscientific studies, actually triggers mutual stress reduction. Okay, I think we all know that intuitively. You know, if you're frightened, you hold hands, you hug each other. But what I found fascinating when I learned about Dr. Jim Cohen at the University of Virginia, his work where he took couples and he put one of them through an fMRI under a, a, a stressful condition and found that under hand-holding conditions, as opposed to no hand-holding, and hold, holding the hand of a stranger, which was a technician, um, they found that, you know, hands down, <laughs> that um, the stress reduction by holding anyone's hand was tremendously a huge difference from holding no one's hand. So, I found this fascinating. So, um, this project, Duo Brains, was originally conceived and led by me uh, through Artahack. And I believe that somebody talked about Artahack earlier, is that correct? Artahack is a program offered by ThoughtWorks where they put together a concept chosen and created by an artist and they will build a team around you to help realize your idea. So Artahack happens in a quick uh, four Saturdays where um, in my case I was put together with Aaron, the industrial designer. We had a programmer and we had two artists who could also program. And in four Saturdays we realized this project. Getting back to the neuroscientific study, uh, you know, I found that totally fascinating. So when I say that hand-holding actually triggers um, mutual stress reduction, we're talking about like people being interconnected neurally. We are neurally interdependent. And um, I just find that an incredible thing. I love that that can be a, a um, an understanding that we have as human beings um, and to keep that in mind as we move forward. Um, meaning, moving forward what? As we move forward into how the world is changing, AI is going to be absolutely reconfiguring everything about our lives. I think this is an important thing where we're talking about things related to empathy and cognitive, uh, ethical cognition, essentially. Um, so the performance is not that long, it's about three minutes long. So here's what's going to happen. It's going to feature projected visuals from our live EEG brain data, and there will also be sound accompanied with it. The sound will be based on EEG as well as ECG, our heart um, data. Uh, so again, it's three minutes long. The first minute is, is just going to be us relaxing. Um, the second minute is when we're going to begin our troubled, disturbing memory. Um, without holding hands. And then the third minute will be, we continue that disturbing memory and we will hold hands. And what you will see projected behind us will be the visual representation of the live data. Um, so my intention for this project was to see if we could use emerging technology, brain, in this case brain computer interface, to give empathy, visual and audio expression. Um, my further interest in it is neural networks and ways that we could possibly encode ethical cognition in future AI. So I just want to mention that because I'm an artist, what am I doing here at a tech you know, industry conference? Well, it's because I'm interested in mind and what reality is, and guess what? All of 
you know, the work that you're doing is actually ushering in the architecture for that future. Um, so uh, that's what moves me as an artist, and I like to create projects that help to share this dialogue that makes concepts a visual, a visceral experience, you know, something memorable, we're gonna care about, we're gonna talk about it. Okay, so what's going on in my head right now is a 16 channel collecting raw data. It's all open source. We're using a board, which is in the center there, which is an open BCI board. Open for open source, BCI for brain computer interface. Um, now, this essentially is a really different from what is commercially available out there, um, which typically you will see in other art projects. Um, these other headsets, which are available, are really a different grade. They are not research grade. This is literally research grade. The OpenBCI board and headset are commercially available. Um, we would still call it a consumer device. It's not a medical device. Uh, but normally used in research, it is used for games. The interesting thing about it is its clinical quality, you know, being 24-bit, uh, 16 channel, uh, but at the same time, the price is about 5% of uh, medical EEG, typically. And because it's wireless and uh, because it's not sold as a medical device, uh, there are a lot of limitations normally that aren't there in this situation. And so uh, OpenVCI, a New York company, sells the electronics and you can actually download the headset for free, print it at home, and then uh, overall you have a much lower cost system. And because everything is open source, you have the ability to modify that. It's got an open source processing based GUI. It has a fully open backend platform. You can uh, feed data to and from the board using Python. Uh, you can connect it to Node.js if you want to send that data up to the cloud. There is a accelerometer built into the board. That board also has Bluetooth that can connect to your phone. So you know, think about that. You can walk around with your Bluetooth connected phone that's recording GPS. Uh, so when you take this device, EEG device, outside of a clinical environment into the real world, you're collecting data in the context of your actual life, which is very different than the legacy 30 years of data we've collected using this type of device. Okay, so Dual Brains was originally, again, conceived by B, and we did it through uh, ThoughtWorks Artahack. Um, my original team was uh, Aaron Trokula, who is sitting here with me. Uh, the programming was originally done by Gabe Ibagon. Visuals by artists Pat Shui and Gail Nisim, with additional programming by ThoughtWorks, uh, Julian Deswave. And again, it's currently being run by Nels Christensen. So when we get the OK from Nels, we're going to begin. Just a note about the shape here. Um, the shape is al allowing us to move around freely and independently, and it's constructed of laser-centered nylon.
Okay. So there you have it. That's Dual Brains. Um, again, this was done in relatively short time through Artahack at ThoughtWorks. It's wonderful that ThoughtWorks makes it possible for um, a diverse talents to be able to put our minds together and realize something that may be even a little bit out there. Um, so uh, Aaron and I are going to be here at the end. I, believe it or not, you've actually come to the end of a full day of XCOM. <laughs> 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 We're going to be here. I believe there are going to be drinks and, and some, some snacks available. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions you have about dual brains or open BCI or uh, interests that we may have, um, uh, as well as how we would like to continue developing dual brains. Um, open BCI has, um, you know, allows for not just EEG sensors, but any electrical sensor. So, you know, you can use your imaginations there. Do you want to add? Uh... I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.